Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, I figured it's about time for us to let our characters die. So let's implement some functionality for that. Uh, this sort of feels like it might belong in the combat component. So let's do some functionality here. Uh, first off, before doing that, we can clean up some of this spawning actor here. We're not sending information about owner and instigator, which is good for us to send because uh, we want that to also be able to um, be used as information when we're damaging a character so that the right character gets experience and such things. So uh, we have set up a pawn reference over here already, so we can just drag that off, get it, and drag it in as an instigator. And the owner here, is, we can just plug in our uh, owner for this um, component essentially. And that's all that we need to do over there. Other than that, we want to uh, listen for another uh, another event happening. So currently we are listening for uh, taking any damage. Uh, so that's when we're doing this part of the damage taken part. We have a listener for state's weapon to demonstrate how you could be handling something like uh, the dynamic checking for damage for weapons. Uh, but in addition to that, we may also want to uh, have a check for when we're dying. So let's do that so we're going to be doing this we're going to be doing like so and we're going to be adding a listener here again and this time we're from the game class com game class gameplay tags component uh, so we'll put it in in last here just because that's where we have some space right now but you might want to clean this up maybe with some uh, sequences or something like that to make it a little bit more uh, easily overviewed or perhaps make it in uh, proper functions a little bit better than, uh, than I have. Hopefully you don't take everything I do here as uh, gospel because uh, sometimes, I, even though I try to strive for scalability and, and good habits and stuff like that, sometimes I, I uh, slip a little bit or miss some things as well. Uh, but essentially we want to say that we want to listen for the state dead event or tag here essentially and if that happens we want to have an event we can say uh, death occurred or something like that and uh, for the most part we don't need to do a whole lot of things what we could do is we could have something like a um, a death animation for example so let's create that uh, death animation and we can just make that of the type animation montage and let's see what animations we have available to us uh, we have one that's called greatsword death let's take that one to begin with and we'll make a montage of it save the default name and let's go into combat again and we'll just say that this is the montage that we want to play so that's good and fine for that so now we want to actually play a montage and what we want to play is this montage and we want to do it like so and the skeletal mesh that we want to have is of course the uh, the skeletal mesh that we have an interface for for uh, our owner essentially Yes, we can get owner. I could have just typed it and not been as lazy, I guess. Uh, get mesh, we have a interface for. Which returns our skeletal mesh. So this will allow us to play a death animation now when we are decidedly dead, essentially. Uh, but in addition to that, we may want to do some other things. We might want to say, well, if you're dead, uh, you're not supposed to be uh, controlling your character anymore. So that might be one thing. Um, so we might want to do the following, get controller. Uh, no. Um, 
Right, because we need to have a pawn. Uh, we have a pawn reference. Only pawns can be controlled, so only those can have uh, controllers. Uh, so like that. Now, this controller is just a generic controller. It could be an AI controller or a play AI controller. So it doesn't really matter which one, uh, because both of them we want to have unpossessed. So by doing this, unpossess. We're now essentially saying that whenever you die, you should not have any control anymore of your character. We get the mesh of the character. We play a montage of you dying. And I do believe we have a debug key for dying, right? It's like um, some one of the first ones we actually did. Yes, yeah, so we had a state of dead here, essentially. So let's try it out. So we go in here, we press the one key. We see an animation going and I can actually, uh, nothing can, can be done here. There is, however, a problem with that the animation, once it is done, it's resetting to uh, standing up again, which is not probably what we want to do. And also we have a invalid node over here for... Okay, that wasn't super descriptive. Let's see if we can find a better place. Um, maybe there? It's in the BPXB. Okay, so we're getting a call to BPXB here because we're killing ourselves, so we're trying to award XP to ourselves. Um, so we may want to have a check here uh, to make sure that this is possible as well. Uh, in, in this case, it's a little bit weird because uh, we're the ones who are, are killing ourselves, but yeah, uh, we'll see what we'll do about that in a moment. Uh, for now, we're going to go to our combat and we may want to say that um, we have a bunch of different events here that happen. And what we could say is something along the lines of uh, the mesh that we have over here, we can say why is that not working? Come on. There we go. So we can set pause anims, for, for example. And if we set this on the blend out, that's when it's uh, reached the point of the animation where it's ended and it's starting to blend out, depending on how much of a blend time you have on the animation. Uh, so we set it on pause animations. Then it should hopefully now uh, stay on the ground after we have died. So you can see that it's uh, not animating over there. Uh, so let's go check at this part where we're awarding XP here. So um, so what I believe is the issue here is that we have a condition which could happen something like uh, if we were to shoot a fireball and then we died and then whatever we shot the fireball at uh, kills something, then something similar would happen. Uh, and essentially what we want to do is probably just... Um, this should not be an issue. There's no references here. We are unpossessing, so we're losing the controller over here, but we're checking if it's valid there. Do, do, do. Could it be that this one is invalid? We have a controller, but we don't have a pawn. So let's uh, check a valid here, just to see if I am correct or not. Um, so we're saying we're only supposed to go forward with the step of checking for a component by class if we have a valid pawn, essentially. Um, so let's kill. And we're dead. Everything is stuck. We escape. We get no errors. Okay, so that, that was the issue then. That um, We still have the controller, which is still active. So we're finding who killed something. And we want to award that controller uh, XP. However, the pawn we unpossessed, which means that we can't go to the pawn and get this XP component to give it XP. 
Um, so that is why it's failing. It it was, however, still as far as I could see, still giving us 100 XP in the top here. So it's a little bit odd that it would complain about not being able to reach it and at the same time being able to award it. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that should describe the situation. Uh, so now we have a very basic situation here of like dying. So how can we actually go about checking if we are going to be dead? Well, we have the function over here where we're doing damage taken and we could have information either uh, by adding another listener to our health and checking if our health is below zero or we could check uh, uh, immediately here if you wanted to as well it's a little bit up to you how you want to go about it but to be a little bit consistent let's do a, a tag listener that's the wrong one we want to have a tag listener from our bpc attributes here yeah, so let's go get our owner and get component by class and get our BPC uh, attributes. Uh, not yet, we want to do this also. We want to say um, get attribute, right? Get attribute from tag. That's not what I want to do at all. I'm so sorry. We want to add a listener. My attention span seems to be lacking a little bit. Uh, like so. And then we say we want to listen to health. And now you can add an event for this as well. So you can react to this. So health changed. And what we want to do then is we may want to check if uh, we break this. And we can check if value change, no, not value change, if value attributes that's changed. Let's see here. I don't remember what values we had. So we have these values. Okay. So base value here is representing our current value. So if this is less than or equal to zero, then we are effectively dead. And if we are effectively dead, we can say that our character should now be dead. So we can do get owner and get component by class gameplay tags and uh, add tag. And then finally choose uh, dead tag. And the origin we get from over here. So we can hide these pins. So we're essentially checking our health now, which we are ourselves actually changing over here when we take damage. And whenever it's changed, and this happens also if we get healed, for example, uh, we will check if our current value or current health is zero or below zero. If that is the case, then we're supposed to be dead. Uh, and then uh, the dead logic should be kicking in uh, over here, which would uh, unpossess us and lose control. So we have our fireball spell, which does AOE damage. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, is it this button maybe? Okay, so we're using the fireball and we use it again. That's enough damage to kill us. We fall over, we're dead. Um, so yeah, and we can also check that it works against the AI, which it hopefully should. So we're shooting some fireballs at him and he goes and dies as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully pretty straightforward. Uh, not the very cleanest when it comes to the code, of course, but I hope my explanation it makes sense for you. Uh, it, it might be that you don't want to have the code in the same place as I do either. You might want to organize it slightly differently or at least uh, compartmentalize it a little bit so it's not uh, as... Because look at it, it's pretty 
extensive by now so we should really clean this a little bit but uh, I don't think we will be doing that in this particular project however uh, we've done some cleaning with the commenting but when it comes to the structuring of things that's usually a fairly individual thing anyway I think this is uh, enough for this episode I hope to see you in the next one Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.